Welcome back, let's see. I'm Scott, you're at the Scott Spot channel, and as you can obviously tell, we are about to begin the last chapter of Final Fantasy XIII. So last time we finished chapter 12, and I would sum up what happened, but as you know, uh, the data log will probably do that for us. So let's find the, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Eden. Well, we're pretty much done with Eden, but, well, I don't want to spoil anything. Man, I'm excited. Okay, um, yeah, so let's just get started right away. Loading, loading, okay. When the blinding flash of light fades, where their worst soldiers now stand, mindless seeth. With no focus to complete, their souls are stripped from them at the instant of their transformation. Thus did the foul sea dispose of humans whose usefulness is ended. Rosh, the sole survivor, defends the Sanctum Army and their obedience to foul sea law. Even though he harbors doubts as to the foul sea's true intentions, the peace and harmony of Cocoon cannot be upheld without them. It is his desire to protect the stability of society that allows him to commit atrocities such as the Purge. The end justifies the means. Realizing his error in judgment, the Psycom director still cannot change what is done. The only remaining path is to live his final moments as he has tried to live his life, in the service of Cocoon. The conflict among the people is coming to an end, but the danger to Cocoon is not over. Not until Bartandalus and his schemes are defeated. Well, we'll see about that. So, yeah, uh, most of the, a lot of the Sanctum military got turned to, uh, into Sacrifice Seath. And Rosh sacrificed himself and called off the manhunt for the Lassie. So that should make things much, uh, a little bit easier. We won't have the military after us, at least. And we actually don't start off with a cutscene. We start off in the Eden Hall Reliquary. Whatever that means. So let's just uh, head forward. What's our CP situation look like? Oh, Hope is maxed out. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to uh, invest some of that really quickly. Vanille's pretty much maxed out too. Okay, so as you can see, I used everybody's CP and their secondary roles until they were below 800,000. No big deal. I'm not sure how much CP the enemies here give, but we'll have to monitor it closely. Wow, this place is grand looking. Is this where... Eden is? Is there anything in here even? Where's the cavalry? If they made it this far, we'll see them soon enough. Whoa. So the whole thing about the cavalry was a rouge from the beginning. The fuck are we? Well, that answers that. Orphan's Cradle. The Nascent Throne. I don't know what Nascent means, so I'll have to look it up. This is it. A lot of dreams died to get us here. And we can't let it be for nothing. You said it. It's not just our future we're fighting for. We'll do it for everyone. Fauci rule ends here. Dysley, we're coming for you! Data log updated. Okay, uh, let's see here. Data log, events, chapter 13. The Cradle Will Fall. The cavalry soldiers set on overthrowing Falci rule now wander the halls of the Sanctum as monstrous seeth. Bartandalus never intended for them to reach Orphan. It was merely a ruse to spur the reluctant Lassie into action. Though the companions refuse to complete their focus, he no longer needs to manipulate their minds. All that remains is to crush any hope they have for their future. When that hope turns to despair, one of them, consumed by anger and regret, will transform into Ragnarok, and the beast, an unstoppable incarnation of wrath, will slay Orphan. 
Cocoon will shatter and the energy released by the deaths of millions will summon the Maker. A new dawn approaches. It is for this day that Spartanilus built Cocoon, tended to its people, and watched over the servants of the Pulse Foul Sea. He gives one final order to the Foul Sea Eden. Guide the steps of the cursed La Sea. Bring them to the one who dreams of death. Bring them to Orphan's Cradle. Oh, man. I can't believe the whole cavalry thing was a rouge from the beginning. Oh, and by the way, in case you were worried about Rig Day, he apparently wasn't in the squad that got turned to sea because he is definitely, he survives the events. Well, I can't say anything too spoilery, but he's not dead yet. Orphan's Cradle. This is the dimension created by the Foul Sea Eden at the command of Bartandalus. The very structure itself is the true form of the being that sits at the center of Cocoon, overseeing the endless functions that keep the floating world running. The sea of data flowing through Eden has materialized as physical matter, forming a shell that shelters the sleeping orphan in a space that hovers between reality and dream. So you could kind of see or Orphan's Cradle as like a foul sea dimension. And uh, so if you're not after the Scarletites, it might be a better idea to just skip these sacrifice battles. Poor thing. She's the only one of us apparently not in danger of becoming a seat. But let's try to get these guys. Man, they're shiny. I wonder how big these groups are. But anyway, as I was saying, it's best to try, unless you're just looking for Scarletites, to avoid these guys. The risk does not um, outweigh the... Uh, well, I wouldn't say the risk, but the rewards out do not outweigh the effort it takes to beat these guys. Thanks. I guess I could use it sooner. As soon as. Let Hope put all this shit on us. Appreciate Man, they really like putting those debuffs on. Hopefully they don't cast death on anybody. Keep putting buffs on, Hope. Bravery and faith would be nice. I wonder how long it should take us to beat these guys, technically. Come on, Hope. Get the rest of our shit up. Don't put bravery on yourself. Okay, let's switch to Relentless then. These guys don't have any weaknesses, right? Right. Physical damage is halved, so we want to use magic. Fire, blizzard, thunder, water, arrow. Oh wow, we just explode the shit out of them. Don't use an ethema on me. Yeah, so I'm using magic spells instead of strike since it's weak against magic, apparently. Or not weak, but it's not as... They do more damage this way. Looks like Fang was pretty successful in getting some debuffs on the whole group. And it looks like they're not really doing that much damage to us, so that's good at least. That looks like Death does a little bit of damage though. Just watching Fang chip away at their health bars is awesome. So anyway, um, this is one of my least favorite Final Dungeons in Final Fantasy. Yes, it looks freaking awesome but the music is just kind of slow and there's like one cutscene in the whole thing. Nothing really happens here until the end. So, yeah. Not one of my favorite areas. Final Dungeon music should be rousing. Make you feel like you're awesome or like you're going towards the final battle. This just makes me feel like it's time to go to bed. Of course, you can't hear it right now because this is... So the battle music for this area is actually one of the boss themes. Uh, Test of the Lassie. Which is kind of cool, I guess. In fact, Fane got lots of debuffs on this guy. We might stagger this one before we actually kill it, though. Yep. And now is the part where you die. See, Fang's actually using Ruin over and over. And battle done. So I probably won't show any more of these sacrifice battles, so let me just take care of this other group. Maybe. Holy shit, I got three Scarletite out of that. That's awesome. Okay, so I guess let's head forward. How much... 
I'm just making sure we're not getting CP too fast. Of course, we only did two battles, so... This place is shiny. You have to admit, though, that it, this place does look really cool. Let's just take a look around real quick. Lightning's hair and cape match well. So we got a waypoint here. Gift from Bartandalus? <laughs> uh, if we're gonna run away, now's our chance. So, guys, which way are we going? Seriously though, why would we go back to Pulse at this point? So as you may notice, uh, we can go back to Grand Pulse. That kind of looks like the Valis Media. Uh, but there's no point in doing that. The whole reason we're doing all this story and stuff now uh, is so we can get that last Crystarium expansion. Uh, and then over there is a gate to Eden so we can actually return to the capital of Eden if we need to. But we don't. I know not the entirety of Eden is accessible, so... Also, this whole Tesserex zone that we're in right now, um, you can't, once you go past a certain point, you can't access more of it either, so just be wary of that. Wait, did I get turned around somehow? Um, no, I didn't. Alright, so let's head this way and see what awaits us, if we even can. Yeah, here we go. So I can't, I'm not really sure if we're going the right way or not, but we might as well head this way for the time being. I didn't really see another path. The waypoint is apparently over there, so this has to be a side path, right? Now what is that over there? So we got more sacrifices this way, so I'll take care of them real quick. Five stars, baby. Okay. Looks like we got a new enemy over there. But we'll deal with him when the time comes. For now, let's head this way. What is this enemy here? Oh, it's flying around like crazy. Oh shit! Oh, there it is! This is an Aquila Velocycle. So it's another Velocycle. How a Velocycle got into Orphan's Cradle, we may never know. Okay, so... Susceptible to slow, susceptible to imperil, and that makes me think we should probably switch. Let's and it's weak against water and ice, but let's switch to even dodge then. I'll use another Libra. All right, and we also know high damage dealing potential delivers devastating physical attacks. So I'll just cure for a second while Thing puts on more debuffs. Did she get deprotect and D shell on it? Wow, it's weak against a lot of different debuffs. I wish you could look at it. It's hard to look at its status things while... Uh... Okay, I think it has enough uh, debuffs on it. Let's go back to Relentless. I don't, not sure what all Hope got on, but... It's res resistant. It's weak against all elements, but it's resistant to physical and magical attacks, so go figure. I guess that balances out, probably. Well, let's just uh, use our attacks then. Damn, even with all those debuffs on and the buffs that Hope put on, it's still resi highly resistant to damage. 
It's almost like we're going to have to stagger it to do anything serious, but at the same time, this it's stagger rate is charging really slowly. Plasma cannon. This could hurt. Wow, that is going to be some cannon. Oh, we staggered it somehow. I didn't realize the stagger gauge was rising that fast. But this thing's going down now. This thing is supposed to be a really tough enemy, so I'm surprised we did that well against it. Yeah, put your blazing hot saber up. But we only got four stars, so there's that. Okay. Let's head off this way then. Nothing over there. Oh, and I should have mentioned, um, those DD things that appeared before us that made the portals to Pulse and Eden, those are actually manifestations of the Foul Sea Eden. So yes, we do get to see the Foul Sea in this game. Is there anything over there? Is there any point to going over there? We might as well take on another of these Villa Cycles. That battle went even better than the first one, although I only got three stars, so that makes me think that maybe I should skip the debuff and buff phase that, the, that I start out with. Or even dodge, I should say. Okay, let's jump up here then. This reminds me of something, but I'm not sure what. Just the way these blocks are laid out. Ooh, there's an, another new enemy, the Megram Thresher. I don't think we're going to be able to get a preemptive on it, so here we go. This thing's big. This is uh, like that boss that uh, Saz and Vanille fought in Nautilus. Techniques, Libra. Man, it's a bit even bigger than I thought. Okay, so fire damage is halved, thunder damage is halved, physical and magic damage is halved. Oh shit. I never understand the point of physical and magic damage being halved. It's like, why even have a half? Alright, so Fang puts in peril on it. Let's use Libra again. Man, Hope's hurting. Okay, so an employee's non-elemental attacks attacks quickly and relentlessly. Well, it, it's not it's susceptible to slow, so you should fix that thing. Oh wow, it killed Hope just now. It wasn't kidding about quickly and relentlessly. Alright, let's heal Hope. He's gonna have to put all those buffs back on himself though. Hurry up, kid. You can only heal for so long. See, it keeps interrupting me. Faith. Putting faith on everybody now. Alright, let's switch to Relentless. Wait, it's weak against ice and water, right? Okay, so... Aqua Strike, Frost Strike, Aqua Strike, Frost Strike, Aqua Strike. I guess the point of this is to stagger it before it can really stagger you. Why did Bravery disappear from me? Unless it's somehow getting rid of my buffs? Man, Fang's just doing all kinds of crazy damage. Well, we're not going to get to stagger it, but it'll be close. I uh, don't expect a 5-star on that battle, honestly. Oh, wow. It was 5 stars. Nice. Okay. And now we can get this treasure spear, which has... A cherub's crown. Cool. Alright, let's see what the, that stuff does. Uh, increases death resistance by 30%. Well, I can see where that would be useful considering the sacrifices like to use death. Uh, did we get all the items here? There should have been three. Wasn't there a chest down here? Waiting for the map to load. I feel like we're missing something. So we got that treasure sphere. Nothing down there. Hmm, I guess we did get it all. Okay. Uh, what was the component that we got earlier? I wasn't paying any attention. Well, we know we got Scarletite. What else? Gyroscope. Whatever. I don't really care that much. 
Okay. Uh, so let's head back then. Oh wait, we did miss one. Oh, there was another treasure sphere over there. Do -do -do. Well, hopefully that Megram Thresher didn't uh, doesn't regenerate or the Aquila Villa cycles. Man, I can't believe I didn't see that. I just like got the one sphere and then ran right past. Okay, so I'll cut to the sphere. And it contains a nugget of Millerite, which I'm sure will come in handy at some point. All right, so now I'm going to head back to the central area where we started, and uh, I'll meet you guys there. Okay, I'm back in the central area. I've redefeated the sacrifices, which took a while. And now we need to go to the right here, where the waypoint is pointing us. Where? That, that is uh, Eden, Hope. Or at least a version of it. So basically our goal for this whole chapter is to just follow Eden throughout the cradle. Bartanilus did give it one last goal to complete, or focus I should say, and that's to lead us to Orphan. <laughs>